The thing that's impacting all our lives is that the rate of progress within four technologies are converging. Genetics, of course, and we all have heard about DNA and we understand that they're constantly making huge discoveries in that area. But another technology that is relevant to all this is robotics. A third technology is nanotechnology, making, making machines that the size of molecules, tiny, tiny little robots that you can put in the bloodstream that can find a diseased area and have a 10,000 to 1 advantage in administering a medication. As an example, there's a fourth that overlays all of these called artificial intelligence. As computers continue to advance and the software also continues to advance, they predict a day only a few years away. We're not talking decades, we're talking just a few years away where the computers will exceed the capacity of the human brain. So what has emerged here is a goal of what some people call transhumanism. How do you do? To create a superhuman being. It would be a little unkind to present this picture without just a word of friendly warning. We are about to unfold the story of Frankenstein, a man of science who sought to create a man after his own image without reckoning upon God. It is one of the strangest tales ever told. It deals with the two great mysteries of creation, life and death. I think it will thrill you. It may shock you. It might even horrify you. Well, we've warned you. We're not talking science fiction here. We're talking about the aspirations of the most knowledgeable practitioners of these technologies. We're heading into a very strange world. We have entered into what many people at work in advanced fields of science are calling the hybrid age. There are laboratories that are actually conducting experiments on human genetic uh, re-engineering. And when they use the term the hybrid age, what they're saying is that in the same way that we went through the agrarian age, the same way we went through the industrial age, the same way we just have, are now in the information age, they're saying that in the hybrid age, what we have been doing with genetically modified crops, what we are uh, and have been doing with genetically modified animals, we also are going to do to humans. There are federal grants that are being given to universities for the very purpose of dividing the guidelines that will be used for human genetic alteration. Uh, we're already merging human and animal genetic material in laboratories, in literally tens of thousands of laboratories all over the world right now, including here in the United States. We are blending pigs with human genetics, uh, and we're creating humanized pigs for the purposes of what's called xenotransplantation, so they can create organs that may have enough human genetic material in it that they could then transplant it into a human and then not be rejected by our uh, immune systems. And the Academy of Medical Science uh, in Britain is like the FDA here. So it's an important scientific body, and they put out a 200-page report just a few months ago called Animals Containing Human Material, or ACHM. And I would advise people to read their report because they acknowledge that we probably already have islands of Dr. Moreau. We probably already have settings in which we are raising fully mature, part human, part animals. And they have said that Thousands of ACHM are being created around the world and we need an international regulatory commission to oversee the creation of these exotic half-human, half-animals that they believe are probably being raised to full maturity and then they'd start describing the things they're concerned about and that is animals that would have procreative abilities with humans uh, so that you could literally breed a human with an animal and get an offspring. Uh, animals that have human cognitive-like abilities, the ability to think, so that you could have a mouse questioning, where did I come from, is there a god, what is my life about, right? In fact, there was a, uh, a very intelligent scientist by the name of Ivan Balaban, who worked um, at the McGill University in Montreal, Canada, took 
the uh, developing brains of embryonic chickens and he genetically engineered it into the brains of embryonic quail. And then when that species was born, these chickens grew and started exhibiting the vocal trills and the head bobs of quail. What he was able to prove with that experiment is that very, very complex behavior patterns can be uh, transferred from one species across species lines to another species through genetic engineering. As we start changing ourselves genetically, as we alter our genotype, and our genotype is what we get from our parents, uh, it is the blueprint that makes us what we are. You're born to two human parents, you have that genotype, therefore you don't become a monkey. You become a human, you have the blueprint. But as you start altering the genotype, you alter something else that we learn in basic biology in school, and that is the phenotype. Phenotype is how your genotype is expressed, meaning the way you walk, the way you look, your human characteristics, right? Your persona, the fact that you're bipedal, that's the phenotypic expression of your genotypic makeup. And what the Department of Defense is literally saying is that as we start altering soldiers on the battlefield in terms of their genotype, they're going to begin expressing alterations in their phenotype. They're going to walk different, they're going to think different, they're going to look different. Um, in the near future, will we have crime scenes where a serial rapist who is part wolf has conducted some type of criminal activity and it would fall plumb outside of everything we know uh, today about profiling. There are think tanks today, military strategists, uh, who are very, very concerned. I mentioned the Jasons earlier. They're, they're one of numerous groups that are writing white papers for our military talking about the dangers of the near future that cannot be avoided because the technology is already here and it's already being developed around the world. And that's actually the largest, you know, number one policy think tank in the world talking about things like near future genetically engineered humans that will be sufficiently different than you and I so as that you cannot assume that they would be protected by the Constitution which was written for humans as we know them. In fact, it's based on biblical ideas that we have a creator and that our rights are protected uh, as a result of that divine act. They're actually trying to create the legalese around this question right now in order to assure that near future genetically altered humans will be protected by the U.S. Constitution and the Bill of Rights because that cannot yet be assumed depending on how much they are altered genetically. What they're saying is that forms of humanity on the near future will be created, in the near future will be created, and we are their creators, not God. A man of science who sought to create a man after his own image without reckoning upon God.